Now the maple tree is very much a, a tree that uh, grows uh, in Anishinaabe country. Uh, we believe it's a, one of those gifts from creation through Nana Bojo and through other spirits uh, that was given to Anishinaabe years and years ago. The maple is, is, uh, is, uh, grows only in this part of the world, the sugar maple as such, right? In Northeast and North America. Uh, there are other trees from around the world, but don't give out as much sugar as this, this tree here that uh, grows around here. So we treasure that tree. We've always worked with that tree. We give thanks to that tree for, for uh, its gift to us. Okay, I wanted to show you how what a maple tree looks like. These are young maples, uh, and but they're too young to tap. But I wanted to show you how they look like when they're young. They have a kind of a smooth looking bark. There are other trees that have this kind of look to them, so you can't really get them, shouldn't get them confused. Uh, like the poplar tree, as an example, also has smooth bark. Uh, but I wanted to show you in a minute here the mature tree. They start to develop these cracks as they get older on down the tree, and these get bigger as the tree gets uh, uh, bigger itself. So you begin to see this kind of marking, uh, and it, uh, and then you see that it's a more mature tree. So if you could just sort of follow me over to over there. I just want to show you a, another type of tree that can get easily confused. And this one here, this is an ash. This is a white ash. Now you can see they also have a smooth bark when they're young, but as they get mature, you see this kind of barring taking place and uh, ridges and so on. The maple does the same thing, but does it a different style. Okay, we'll step over to a more mature maple over here that is tappable. Now this is a mature maple and it depends on how big it is, how many taps you could put on it. Uh, we've put two, two taps on this one, but you can see how it starts to bar up. And the maple particularly starts to have these, this bark come peeling off. It almost like it's peeling. And that's uh, characteristic of the maple. So you guys know what it looks like. Uh, there are, uh, over here is an example. I'll just show you in a minute another mature tree. Uh, which is the red oak. This one here is a red oak. It's mature. It's, uh, I would say this oak is about 60 to 70 years old, but it doesn't peel like the maple does, and it's darker, and it's not as gray as, uh, as the maple. So this is a red oak. Uh, it uh, grows usually in hardwoods along with the maple, but you, it does not, it bears some sap, but it's very low in sugar, and you don't want to waste your time working it because you won't get much sugar out of it, so on. So you could see this general forest here is what we call hardwoods versus softwoods, which softwoods are pines and cedars. And this is where you find the maple tree. Uh, you find them maples as small as this one. And as you can see, they're not, they haven't cracked yet. Uh, this one is a very uh, young tree, maybe 10 years old, growing and competing with the other ones to get some light. It's struggling. Uh, but you know, I'll tell you something. These mature trees know that this tree is struggling and they will with, uh, hold back on nutrients in order for this to grow. We know that. I'm sure the science world will catch up to that someday. Uh, maybe I can show you some more trees. 
we can go this way. Now this one is called a basswood or a linden. Uh, we use this tree. It's actually not a well tree. You can see where the where the birds have gotten it. There's bugs in there that they're getting after. And uh, but we use this tree for fiber. Uh, out of that fiber, we make rope. All right. Let me show you some other trees. Now this is what we call an ironwood. The characteristic of an ironwood is it peels bark like this, so on, and it has uh, sort of a, a bark that kind of lays more closer to the tree, and so on. So you can't get that confused. Uh, this is a ma young maple tree. You can see the difference. Next to it is a hickory. This is actually quite a rare tree. This is a beautiful tree. It's a hickory. Uh, we use it for handle making, for tools. So you can see how it also has a smooth bark, but doesn't really peel, and the bars aren't as, uh, they're tighter than a maple tree, and so on. So that is a maple. That's all I can show you. If you don't know the difference, uh, the more you, I think the more time you spend in the bush, the better your chances at knowing the difference. And uh, I can now spot a maple tree uh, half a kilometer away and, uh, and identify it by its shape, general shape and the way it produces branches at the top of it and so on. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that is a mature maple. Maples are not doing well. They are susceptible to acid and toxic rain, and uh, they get damaged by them, and then once they get damaged by them, then the parasites move in. So it's not, it's a tree that's very susceptible to, uh, to damage from industry. The, the best way to know what a maple tree is, is to come back when the leaves are out, when you can definitely identify a maple leaf. Uh, also, uh, should mention to you that uh, the best way to know that the season is ready is that when, when the season starts to warm up around, uh, around the 1st of March, that's when the sap starts to flow. Even when it's cold and looks cold, feels cold, they could run. You need frost at night and about a two or three degree temperature above zero in order for it to run very, very briskly. Uh, we also watch certain things uh, like animals uh, to tell us if they're uh, if they're eating it, eating the sap, like the red squirrel will come along, bite a branch and start sucking on it. And that's an indication that the sap is running. And the season lasts about a month. Once you tap a tree, the tap lasts about a month. And then after that, the, nat the tree has a natural ability to seal itself. Uh, it uh, produces a sort of a gel which plugs the, uh, these holes. This, these are old, old holes that were, would have been plugged by the gel. Uh, and these, uh, these stop the sap from flowing at that time. And that finishes the season. So that's one of the ways we know the season has stopped. One of the other ways is that uh, insects starts moving in and start eating it. Here's a Here's some uh, moss, which is an indication that the uh, that they're getting to the sap and they're drinking the sap, and that's beginning the, of the end of the season. Uh, we've tapped this tree for about three weeks now, so it's it will uh, it will give sap for about another month. I, I mean week, sorry, about another week. So that's about the length of the season. 
Uh, some people are able to get more out of it. The earlier part of the season gives you really beautiful amber-colored sap, which is not heavily sweet. And towards the end of the season, it gives you dark, uh, dark syrup, dark sap. And it's kind of woody in taste, if you know what I mean. It kind of turns green on us at that time. But it's still, it's still sap that can be worked down to syrup and is used for cooking. It's a good utility type sap, but not probably not good in pancakes. <laughs>